morning, March the 28th, 2023. Uh, here we go. We got another Monaco container, different than the other one, different floor plan. Still a tag axle and all. What we have is the old creeping slide issue. And we know where the cylinders are, basically, right? So you look up in here and you see some stuff. Let me, let me pause it real quick. And I got a couple other tips for you. All right, so up front, driver's position. Not right or left, because it depends how you're sitting in it. That is the hydraulic pump assembly, a Lippert system, um, that makes the slide go in and out, okay? So it is a one-direction electric motor, but the hydraulic fluid flows in two different directions. So I'll show you one of the cylinders. Let me get, put you on pause and we get under here. All right, so there's the roller. Uh, roller and there's the line there's two lines okay now well, I'll get this one first okay this one is right here at the end and there's the the rod the threaded rod which you do some adjustments with right there okay this means the cylinder get, retracts all right let me put you on pause and get the other one all right so we're back so, there it is. There's the hose. It's upside down, but you can pretty much read it, right? 3250 PSI, right? It's a 3 eighths hose. There's the other end of the cylinder. So, that is the extend hose, okay? And there's two cylinders each side for each um, slide. All right, let me get you out of here. Now, what we had here was a couple problems. One, if you're working by yourself, you got to learn how to set things up. So I put the test light with the multimeter built in. I've showed you that before. There's my leads going down. I heard a click from inside. All right, so I got it hooked to. Here's the battery positive volts, right? Battery positive volts. Let me put it on pause and get you a better light system. Okay, so this is the main B plus cable, battery positive, all right, and this is the relay that's told by the switches in the back to operate, one's positive, one's ground. So the power is supposed to come through here, the contacts, and it's going to light up that meter. So I have it where... It's almost in the center where I can see it from all the way in the back, and I'm going to show you. All right, so I've got it attached on the wiper blade. All right, if you keep a straight line right in here, you're going to go back there. You're going to say, well, take the slides out. Well, that's the problem. We're going to go back here. I like this layout. This came, this came a lot of kind of luck. All right, so what I did, this is the front slide outs this is the road side this is the curb side this is the passenger this is the driver so i'm gonna hit it and i go well no slides so i'm gonna look all the way down there where that red light is probably better that i turn off the ceiling lights hold on all right you can see it it's right there that's the test light right there there standing straight up here I'll go closer to it now there it is so and it tells you the voltage well I can't read it from all the way back there so let me walk around in this dark here all right here we go so we're gonna hit the right switch right here these two it don't matter which one because either slide ain't working and we're gonna watch the red light up there I'm gonna blow it up for you here we go there we go. Now, let me look again. Hit the wrong damn switch, right? Ready? You see it turning red? That means that voltage is getting through that relay. I happen to know that the voltage is 13-something. You could put a meter up there that's got a lit background and see the actual voltage. But I'm just doing it with a test light. Now, that's retract, right? 
All right, so let's go back to one round. This is Jeff from RV Diagnostics, just doing a little troubleshooting. All right, showed you how to get by when you're working with yourself. If you have a significant other or friend or something like that, they could probably help you. But So I showed you the cylinders. They're dual acting. That means they have hydraulic fluid pushing from both ends, not at the same time. Uh, so you learn where the retract was and the extend was. You learn basically where the pump is, okay? So here we go, we'll turn again. Now this one was leaking fluid. Right there. So you got a couple problems. All right, so the fluid probably got in the motor. I've already whacked it. There you go, I whacked it with this dead blow. Didn't help none. So I'm gonna take the thing apart. There's a couple problems here. Probably the hydraulic fluid's leaking. All right, the pump is sealed. There should be a check valve up in there, but you learn where they are. We're gonna first get the pump to work, then we'll see if the slides hold. Usually it's an internal seal between the uh, cylinders. Let me show you. So this is it. There's a hydraulic line. There's hydraulic lines I showed you. So the fluid pumps into here. This is sealing inside the cylinder, pushing it this way, which would be retract. All right, so that's the inboard. So the hose is outboard. It's always the opposite. So now we, and the fluid gets pushed out back into the reservoir. So it gets pushed in here, pumped. The cylinder goes over this way, squeezing the fluid out. Now the opposite, you go, hey, I want to extend. So you, you're at the other end, the inboard, because you want to take the slide outward, outboard. You push the fluid this way, it pushes this cylinder over, and the fluid in this area gets pushed back into the reservoir. Hopefully that was helpful. So let's say we get the pump working and all. All right, that's what we got to do first. So we're worrying about the slide creeping out it could be the cylinders right which I'm very doubtful at at this point because what does the pump do it does both slides both sets of cylinders so the driver's side slide is creeping out so if you think it was the check valves and the solenoids that were bleaking backwards you would see this one also out because it locks in both. All right. And I haven't found no lockouts on this one. Some of them have lockouts. So this is making me believe that it's the cylinders. Okay. So how are you going to prove that? Now it's, these cylinders are like three, four hundred bucks my cost. So what you do is, you know you're going to retract, right? So you... And you push the fluid in. And you get it all the way in. You take this line off, the extend line off. You drain all that fluid out. It'll drain out for a while. Then you hit the retract button. If you see fluid squirting out of here rapidly, a lot, um, you've found your internal seal bed. So you, you can rebuild some of these. Some of them are welded on the end. And if you get a good hydraulic guy, but by the time you pay him labor and parts, you're just probably better off buying these cylinders. But we all know people. All right, once again, how do we prove that this internal seal is leaking? Well, we all the way out already. Then we take the hose, that's what. The retract is outboard. The extend is on the inboard. So we take the inboard hose off let it all drain out then bump it for retract because it's already in and it should hold like the pump loads up so you let you hear it and if it bleeds a lot out this way this seal is bad all right so we got a couple things wrong with this one that's probably why they're here uh, remember there's an rv diagnostics garage which is me that guy right here this uh, base that you got to put up with um, but there's also a school, so I can help you learn when you bring your RV here. I got 50 amp water and sewage in the back. 
My wife likes some of the people she meets. She gets to retire in, I think, October the 4th, 2026, which is a couple years off, but she wants me to put another 50 amp out there. And water ain't hard to run. It's just I have, I run my own 50 amp, folks. So I got my 30 right here. All right, I'm getting ready to put a 50. I'm gonna have a 50 and a 30, independent of each other. All right, because I do get some 30s in here. Um, this here is a 240, 20 amp, but I got 30 cable going to it, so I'm gonna switch it to 120 and run my air compressor, which is going to go right out here. All right, it's going to go right here. All right, so. I can have a little fun so I don't have to run the diesels, air them up. That way they get out of here quicker. Two, I can use, it's outside, so I can use the air compressor to find air leaks, all right, quicker without the engine running noisy, especially if they're little, little ones, man. So you want to pressurize the system all the way. All right, once again, where are we going to meet? Safe travels, and may your campfire burn bright till we meet again. Here at the school, here at the garage, in Seaford, Delaware, at the campgrounds. Remember, folks, I'm just going to say hello. I might help. It depends what the day is, but most likely, I'm on vacation. <laughs> we can talk, though, about it. And if it's a nice day and the, and the ladies want to go out and drink wine or go somewhere, that's all right. Because I'm not into all that, but I do it with her because I love her. But, um... We can go over to your RV and play around. You're going to do most of the work because that's the way you learn. I'm there just to guide you. And I might dig in every now and then. But that's the other way. We can meet at fueling stations. Just say hello. And I even beat my big air horns. Going down the road, waving at other RVs. I don't care if you're a travel trailer, um, pop-up, big, bigger damn RV than me. I'm only 40 foot and I'm a 99. So... I don't judge you by what you drive. I judge you by your character and who you are. Um, so I don't care what your political view, religious beliefs are. They'll probably come up around the campfire. We've had some interesting discussions. <laughs> anyway, once again, folks, Jeff from RV Dionysus. Hope you learned something. Hope you learned how to set this up. There will be more videos on this because i got to tear this pump assembly apart. Thank you from all my members on my website, my YouTube channel, which is almost 6,000 members, my Facebook place, <laughs> Facebook page, RV Diagnostics Troubleshooting is over 30,000 with a 17,000 continuous people in the background watching, reading, asking questions. That's pretty impressive, folks. That's over 50 some percent. Um, I appreciate that. And the what is it the website where you get paid uh you pay me 150 dollars a year uh please if you've already joined don't renew i don't do auto reno text me call me and say hey what's the special deal all right there you go thank you this is jeff from rv diagnostics